Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. Almost a fortnight after three people died from suspected mushroom poisoning in Victoria, details about the fatal lunch are still emerging. The woman who cooked what's believed to be the killer meal has now produced a statement for police, which adds even more intrigue to the story. Today, investigative reporter Dan Oakes, who exclusively obtained the statement on what we now know and the lingering questions that have us captivated. Dan, we really wanted to get you on to talk about this case that you've been looking into because it's so intriguing and it seems to have people talking and wondering what's going on. It has. It's the story that's sort of gripped the, yes. the attention of the country. And yeah, in the middle of it is Erin Patterson. Mm-hmm. Who's Erin? Well, she's a, a, a lady from Leangatha, which is a, a small town in, in South Gippsland. Now she's, yeah, dealing with the fact that she prepared a lunch that it appears may have killed three people, and including her parents-in-law, and, and left another another man in hospital in a, in a critical condition. Yeah, it's a tragic story. She spoke, actually, after she was stopped outside her home by journalists last week. I'm devastated. I love them. And I can't believe that this has happened and I'm so sorry that they have lost their lives. How are you I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it. And that's audio there from News Corp Australia. So the case centres, Dan, around this family lunch. What else do we know about that lunch? So it was on the 29th of July, and at that lunch were Erin Patterson, her parents-in-law, the parents of her estranged husband, uh, Mm -hmm. that's Don and and Gail Patterson, and Gail Patterson's sister, Heather Wilkinson, and her husband, Ian Wilkinson. Ian Wilkinson's Mm -hmm. the only one of that quartet who, who is still alive. The lunch has taken place and, and maybe 24 hours afterwards, it's become clear that, that you know, there's some significant issues arising from that lunch. The Department of Health contacted Erin Aaron Patterson at that point and said, um, you know, we have a suspicion that it might have been that lunch you prepared. So, mm-hmm. and essentially everything's just progressed from there. So Ian, he's a local pastor. He's still in a critical condition in, in hospital. Dan, the interest in this really exploded, didn't it, when police did say that the symptoms were consistent with mushroom poisoning? Yeah, that, that's correct. And a couple of days after, you know, these three people died and the head of the homicide squad gave a press conference in which he mm. explicitly referred to Erin Patterson as a suspect in, in the case. The 48-year-old is suspect. The 48-year-old is, well, this, yes, she is. Um, and she was and she is because... Um, she cooked those meals for us, uh, for those people that were present. Uh, now, again, um, she hasn't presented with, with any symptoms, but we have to keep an open mind in relation to this, um, that it could be very innocent. Uh, I mean, that grabbed my attention know. straight away because I was yes. a crime reporter for quite a while and, and it's quite unusual for, for police to come out and, and do that, say immediately afterwards that someone is yeah. a suspect. Yeah, right. And that was Detective Inspector Dean Thomas. Mm. So Erin is a suspect, according to police, because she cooked the meal, which was evidently a beef wellington. And Dan, she was the only adult at that lunch who didn't fall ill. Well, Sam, that's not strictly true, and that's one of the uh, that's one of the misconceptions that uh, sort of circulated immediately after the lunch. Uh-huh. But we we got hold of the statement last week that Erin Patterson had provided to the Homicide Squad uh, last Friday, and in that statement, she she says no, that's that's incorrect. That she she did go to hospital after the lunch, I believe, on the Monday. So the lunch was on Saturday. She went mm-hmm. to hospital on the Monday. She was discharged and sent home, but then she went back to the hospital and was transported by ambulance to uh, Monash Medical Centre in Melbourne and and was there overnight. 
Okay, so Erin, she's always maintained her innocence and she said that to the journalists that were at her house. Police say you're a suspect. Do you have anything to say about yes, that? Yes, I say I didn't do anything. I love them and I'm devastated that they're gone. Now, as you mentioned, we have this written statement from her that she sent to police. And you obtained that this week. You got a copy of it. I gather, Dan, you're not going to tell us how you actually got your hands on that. <laughs> <laughs> but what else did we learn from it? Well, yeah, look, uh, the first thing that she addresses in the statement is that when the police first asked to talk to her, she she essentially Googled criminal mm -hmm. lawyers and found one and she says that that lawyer advised her to give a no comment interview to police which mm -hmm. she now acknowledges was the wrong thing to do and she bitterly regrets it's almost like she wrote this statement with the intention of point by point rebutting uh -huh. the various things that had been speculated on she also in the statement gives the first account that, that we're aware of of where the mushrooms came from mm. um, and she says it was a combination of button mushrooms from a, a major supermarket chain that we're not mentioning because there's no suggestion at all that that supermarket chain was selling poison mushrooms mm -hmm. but the other mushrooms in the dish she says she got from a, an asian grocery in, in melbourne and they were dehydrated mm. a pack of dehydrated mushrooms that she had had sitting around for a long time and then just decided to use The ABC understands police searched the Coonwarra transfer station on Friday and removed a food dehydrator from the premises. Today, detectives visited the tip again. Early in the piece, there was a report that police had seized a food dehydrator mm. from, from the local tip. And when the police asked Erin Patterson about that initially, she told them that she had dumped the, the dehydrator at the tip a long time ago. In the statement, she admits that, that that's not true, that she actually dumped the dehydrator at the tip after uh, this fatal lunch occurred. She claims her estranged husband said to her, is that what you use to poison my family? Which sent her into a panic and, and she says led to her dumping the, the dehydrator. So she, she admits that she lied, but says that basically it was, it was brought about by panic. Okay, very intriguing. All right, so Dan, what about this Asian grocery store she mentions in this statement? Have police looked into that? Well, yeah, it's, it's police are being very, very tight-lipped uh, about this. Mm. The Department of Health, according to Erin Patterson, she told the Department of Health immediately that, uh, about these dried mushrooms and she claims that before police seized her phone, she was sent photographs by someone at the Department of Health with packets of dried mushrooms in them, which very closely matched her description of the packet that she had mm -hmm. bought. So, look, so far, you know, as far as I'm aware, there's been no recall of products. There's been no public announcement about a particular store. There's been no store raided or cleaned out, which, you know, suggests that, yeah, they still haven't located what the uh, supposed source of these mushrooms is. And Dan, there are also these reports that her husband fell ill last year. What are they all about? So there were reports early on which appear to have been ripped from you know, a Facebook post that Simon Patterson, her estranged husband, made last year mm -hmm. that he'd spent two weeks in hospital last year severely ill with, you know, what's described as stomach or intestinal problems. And that doesn't mean anything necessarily, but it does add to these questions that everyone seems to have about this case. And Dan, obviously, three people have lost their lives and this happened in a very small community. And that's been hard for that community, hasn't it? Yeah, look, it's uh, it's a beautiful beautiful part of the world, South Gippsland. Mm. I was down there a couple of weeks ago myself. The locals down there, yeah, they're, they're really struggling with, with what's happened. To lose such um, people that were so giving and um, so much pillars of the community, really. And, um, yeah, so I think that's been very difficult. Devastated, absolutely devastated. Him and Heather were... Soulmates, they did everything together. I sat here crying, I'm going, it's come, it just can't be true. And I'm praying hard for Ian to survive. Ian Wilkinson, who's still alive, he was a, a pastor at the church in Currumburra, which is a, a nearby town, very close to Lee and Gatha. Mm. Yeah, it can be very disconcerting for those people.
So there's no confirmation, Dan, that mushrooms are behind the deaths in this case because police are still waiting on toxicology reports, but police did say the symptoms of those who fell ill were consistent with having consumed death cap mushrooms. Have we confirmed what type of mushroom it was that they've consumed? No. And again, we, we, are, we are presuming at this point it's mushrooms. Uh, the symptoms that, uh, that these uh, people presented with are, um, are that of um, death cap mushrooms. And uh, again, you know, we're working closely with Department of Health. And of course, what is it that makes these mushrooms so deadly? From what I understand, the, the main and most serious effect is liver failure or, or serious liver mm. damage. In her statement, Erin Patterson says that when she did go by ambulance to the hospital in Melbourne, they gave her what she describes as a liver protection drug. Uh, also early in the piece, it was reported that Ian Wilkinson was waiting for a liver transplant. Now, there's been some reports that that's now uh, no longer the case. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, from my understanding, the main and, and real danger with the death cap mush mushrooms is the effect on the liver. Mm, Dr. Jonathan Caro, he's at St. Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne. He was telling 7.30 that even one of these mushrooms can kill an adult, so they're obviously incredibly poisonous. The patient will often be okay for a few hours, four, five, six hours, and then will develop profuse, really heavy, watery vomiting and diarrhoea, and over the next few hours that will progress to liver failure and potentially death. This case has kicked off a lot of concern about the dangers of mushroom foraging, hasn't it? Reminding people that actually you have to be really careful with mushrooms. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, I, I don't know what it's like up in up in New South Wales, but down here, um, foraging for mushrooms is it's quite popular, and and it seems to be growing in popularity every year. Maybe that's something to do with, I guess, you know, TV chefs talking about foraging mushrooms. But um, mm. you know, every year, uh, yeah, there there are warnings to people. You've got to be really, really careful. So it's not hard to see, Dan, why there's so much interest in this case. It sort of reads like something out of a novel. What comes next then in this investigation? Well, yeah, that's that's the uh, that's a big question. Yeah. And as as I said, the police aren't aren't talking. As far as I know, Erin Patterson doesn't know what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So I think she's basically just sitting there waiting. She said that she did collect up the remains of the meal and gave them to toxicology people at the hospital. And everyone is basically waiting uh, with bated breath um, to see whether this just quietly fades away and Erin Patterson's completely innocent or, you know, it goes in the other direction. We, yeah, we just don't know. But I, I would assume it'll become clearer in, you know, in the days to come. Dan Oakes is an investigative reporter with the ABC. This episode was produced by Veronica App-App, Nell Whitehead and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. To get in touch with the team, please email us on ABC News Daily at abc.net.au. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to listen to more free podcasts or download the ABC Listen app and stream ad-free.